Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Today, a project incorporating some smaller scale model making work and also something more along the lines of the size you're used to seeing us work at. We've been approached by a company called Glendale Creative, who's come to us with a cute little concept of a penguin for a company called the Pension Insurance Company, or PIC or PIC for short. Their logo is a rather handsome looking penguin, and that's exactly what we're creating here today. Numerous smaller penguins on a desktop scale, and larger penguins to be floor standing. At the moment, the client has two different options that they'd like to explore, a smooth version and a faceted version. They'd like to bring a finished desktop sized sample of each model to their client to make a decision, and will then proceed to create more of whatever they decide on. To achieve exactly the model that they're looking for, and the fact that they've provided us with a 3D file, we've had these initial master pattern models 3D printed, particularly for the faceted version, where this needs to be a symmetrical, highly accurate shape, we want to ensure we get this right from the word go, so there's no interpretation, and we're delivering something that the clients themselves have had designed. Even though 3D printing has come a significantly long way over the last few years, this still requires a lot of cleaning up to get it to a standard fit for purpose. We're going to be taking a silicon rubber mould of both the smooth and the faceted version, but both models need to be filled and sanded down multiple times. From simply working on the facets and having to sand down each face individually, we're already looking ahead to the next stages of the project where, regardless of how well the models come out of the mould, there's always going to be a lot of prep work to do before painting. To help contribute towards the client's decision, we're liaising with our client and letting them know that the smoother version will not only require significantly less work on our end and therefore be more cost effective, but will also come out much neater for the client. The entire form can be sanded down in one fell swoop on each model, rather than the facets which need to be worked up individually. When we're happy with the finish on the model, we start the mould making process by using clay to divide the model up into two halves. Silicon rubber is then poured and added in multiple, gradually thickening layers, and there's something about it that reminds me of that opening sequence in the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, but the main differences being one is pink and one is not, and one will do significantly more damage to you than the other. For reference, I'm talking about the rubber, definitely don't eat the rubber. When all of the silicon layers have set, we back this up with a glass fibre jacket to help the rubber retain the correct form when casting. We then flip this over and repeat the process on the other side to complete the mould, and we'll later go through exactly the same process with the other penguin. When the mould is complete, the fiberglass casts are made by first going in with a gel coat layer, backed up with resin and glass fibre mat. Each half is then taken out of the mould, trimmed neatly and put back in, and then bonding agents are added to the inside before joining the two mould pieces back together. The little dents in the channel that you can see in the silicon rubber work as locators, and this ensures that when the mould is put back together, the rubber aligns properly and meets and sits in the correct position. Each complete cast taken from the mould then needs to have its seam line sanded back, filled and cleaned up so that the join line is no longer visible. Routinely, throughout the cleaning up process, we'll go over the cast with a 2K car body primer. 
This highlights any areas that still need a little more work and eventually will prep the cast ready for the top coat colour. The client has decided to go for a bold matte level finish and this coincides with the client's logo. A smaller airbrush is used to get into all of the tighter spaces before the rest is coated with a larger spray gun for a nice even finish. As you can probably tell, our client's client has thankfully very much opted to go for the smoother finish penguin and we're now going to be creating two more items for this project. We're adapting one of the original penguin models and changing the head position slightly. We're creating a new mould and multiple casts all made in exactly the same fashion so that the client has two models that vary slightly in their stance. We're also going to be creating a larger scale model in much more of our usual style, hand carved from polystyrene before having a mould and cast made from glass fibre. As with many of our YouTube videos like this, hopefully you can see that bespoke items like these penguins that aren't simply bought off of the shelf require a lot of work and attention to detail. These aren't simply moulded in a thin plastic or mass produced at a factory, but are individually worked up to a finish that ourself and hopefully our clients are all proud of. As clever and sophisticated as technology gets, when it comes to a project like this, some things simply need to be finished by hand. And I don't necessarily mean little green hands. Simultaneously, we're starting work here on the larger penguin. Rather than having this 3D printed or CNC cut, you're joining us for more of our standard practice, gridding up onto a large block of polystyrene, hot wire cutting and carving by hand. With the smaller models, we now have a good 3D reference to work from, as well as some front and side on images that we use to cut the preliminary cubist form. After using the hot wire, Aidan then goes to work with nail and wire brushes. For the time being, we're leaving the wings off of the job so that we can work around the whole form and these will be added on later. After carving now complete and having been sanded down, we're going over with a water-based plaster render. This loses that polystyrene bead texture, and although not very strong, it could be sanded down to a smoother finish. As we don't yet know how many of these larger versions of Penguin the client will eventually commission, we want to ensure the finish on these are to a really high standard. Both for the eventual end result, as well as to ensure that we don't have to do an extensive amount of work on each cast, we're actually going over the plaster with a two-part plastic mix, which could be sanded down to an even better finish. Once 
Once again, a grey primer is used, not only to finish the master pattern ready for moulding, but also to highlight any areas that may require more work. The main difference between the smaller penguins and the larger one is quite obviously the size. The amount of silicon rubber needed for the smaller version mould is significantly less than what would be needed for a silicon mould of the larger. With keeping costs down for the client very much in mind, as well as the fact there isn't any surface detail that needs to be achieved, we're going to be creating a purely fibreglass mould. This does however now require the model to be divided up into more than just two pieces as we won't have the flexibility of the rubber to get the cast out in only two parts. For the tighter areas like under the wings and around the tail in between the legs these areas do require rubber inserts to ensure that the cast comes out easily but generally speaking we're going to keep the majority of the mould as just resin and glass fibre. When all of the materials have cured all of the excess trimmed off, the mould separated and the master pattern on the inside removed, the interior of the mould is then cleaned up, ready for casting. This is being laid up in exactly the same fashion as the smaller versions, a gel coat layer backed up with glass fibre only now in more pieces. The combination of the sheer size and the fact that these larger models have considerably more seam lines, this requires a lot more finishing. We want this to be as pinch perfect for the client as we can get, and that requires a real attention to detail. Whilst we're working on the fine tuning here, we'd like to thank our clients Steve Toll and Luke Wadey from Glendale Creative for finding us, coming to us with this project, and especially for confirming the go ahead with the smooth penguins, I'll tell you, those facets would have been a nightmare. It's also enjoyable creating a project and a project video for something that our viewers haven't seen us making before in the studio, so thank you very much indeed. On to the home stretch now, the chosen company colour being applied in a 2K top coat. Once everything has had time to cure properly over the course of the weekend, it's then off to the pension insurance company. Kudos to the photographer for capturing these sculptures in amazing light on location. We really appreciate these being sent over, not only for us to see how they turned out, but so that we can include these in our project video. I mean, look at that. Now that, in the words of a Mr. Benedict Cumberbatch, is a penguin. We always love hearing what you guys think of our projects and our channel, so please feel free to drop a comment below, and by all means subscribe and give us a follow on social media. A big thank you to all of our patrons who support our projects and the creation of our videos, we love having you guys on board, and if you'd like to support our family run studio, you could find our Patreon details below. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.